In modern air combat, you're not guaranteed to have an opponent come at you conveniently from the front of your formation where all your weapons are pointed. A smart adversary will approach from the rear. What do you do when this happens? And what do you do if the bandit switches targets while you're maneuvering on him? We'll answer both those questions in this video. So far in this series, we covered what the roles of the engaged and support fighter are during a fight. If you haven't already, check out these videos because we're going to continue where those left off. Before a fight begins, when roles haven't been determined yet, both pilots should be scanning the sky for threats. In previous videos, we covered what to do once you spot one in the forward hemisphere. But you shouldn't just limit your search to the front. Look around to the sides too. You want to pay extra attention to the blind spots of your wingman. A good wingman makes sure that a bandit won't sneak up on you. Also, don't ignore your RWR. If a bogey leaves his radar on during the approach, take advantage of that mistake. Our reaction is going to be a little different if we spot our bogey in the flight's rear hemisphere. That's because a potential adversary has a huge advantage back there. The fight can quickly go from a 2 vs 1 encounter into a 1 vs 1 fight if we're not careful. One really effective strategy here is to simply turn towards the bogey. If it turns out to be a bandit, then he's going to be forced to make a decision. If he chooses to continue his attack on the closest fighter, then he'll end up sandwiched between you and your wingman. Then the support fighter has a weapon solution handed to him. The other alternative is called a bandit switch, and here's how it's described by the Air Force. A bandit whose stern converts on two fighters, both of which are seen, will usually attempt to switch to the fighter on the outside of the turn at some point after the fighters initiate their break. This switch is to prevent being sandwiched. Turning towards the inside fighter guarantees that the outside one will end up in his rear quarter, but going after the outside fighter puts him at the rear of both fighters. But this can only happen when the bandit is aware of both of you. This is why a good tactical formation with both horizontal and vertical separation is important. It helps to deny the bandit a tally too. If he only sees one of you, then he can't switch, and that makes it easier to sandwich him. Let's take a closer look at how these defensive scenarios actually work, starting with the bandit that chooses not to switch. The wingman, Eagle 2, is the first to notice a bogey in their rear quarter. Since this bogey is behind the flight lead, they need to turn towards Eagle 1. So Eagle 2 calls Eagle Break Right. Eagle 2 could have called a hard right instead. But since this bogey was close enough to employ weapons, a more drastic break turn was called. Eagle 2 immediately follows up with the second radio call to get Eagle 1 looking in the right direction. Eagle 1, bogey right 5, 1 mile level. Eagle 1 sees the bogey continue chasing him. Whether he didn't see Eagle 2 or just made a poor tactical decision, the bogey has decided to keep turning. At this point, they're close enough that Eagle 1 is sure this is an armed aircraft with hostile intent. So he says, Eagle 1, engage defensive. He could have added VID hostile too. But logically, he'd only go defensive if he was sure that this was an enemy. Eagle 2 recognizes this too and assumes the support fighter role by saying, Eagle 1, press. Then he begins maneuvering for a shot. What comes next is almost exactly what you would see if you've done the heat to guns exercise from this video. The bandit has presented the same unaware profile to Eagle 2 from that exercise. Or as the Air Force describes it, the support fighter should have a quick missile shot or transition to a gun wes. You'll also notice that as long as the engaged fighter continues to turn here, it should bring him out of the weapon deconfliction zone and present a clear field of fire. The support fighter would then fire and call Eagle 2, Fox 2. If it results in a kill, he would follow up with Eagle 2, Kill Bandit, Right Turn, 15,000. The engagement could then be concluded with the call of Eagle Separate 270. You can practice this and other defensive ACM scenarios by flying west over the X-shaped airfield and then spawning a bandit from the radio menu. That bandit will then appear behind you. Turning into the bandit and just using the BFM and ACM skills we learned earlier is a very effective strategy. But what about if the bandit switches targets? Let's take a look at that. When we talk about a bandit switch, there are two variations. Here's how the Air Force describes those two switches. This could happen immediately, early switch, or after the bandit pursues one fighter for a short time and then switches to the other, late switch. Regardless of when it happens, you'll want to call it out. This is how the Air Force describes that process. 
The first to assess this should call out bandit switch with your call sign and expect a roll swap will logically ensue. When a bandit switches, it can be pretty confusing deciding who is now engaged. During the switch, it's likely that neither of you is defensive. And you might not be in a good position to tell if your wingman is in a more offensive position than you. So what do you do? Throughout this series, we've talked about how the support fighter is responsible for deconfliction. The same holds true here. If you're in a position where you can deconflict from your wingman, then you want to let your wingman know. A flight lead can direct the wingman to become the engaged fighter with the radio call of Eagle 2 Press. Eagle 2 would then respond with Eagle 2 Engage to acknowledge. That's how a flight lead takes on the role of deconfliction. Now what about if you're the wingman and want to take on support fighter responsibilities? Remember the flight lead has the authority to deny a role swap. So throw out a request if you think you need it and let the flight lead decide. Make a call of Eagle 1 Press and if you hear negative then you'll know the flight lead has other plans. Or you might hear Eagle 1 engaged and now you're deconflicting as the support fighter. Overall, defensive ACM is exactly like what we've covered in this series so far. So you'll execute ACM just like we've practiced. The only difference will be that we'll start off with a game plan to sandwich the bandit by turning towards him. Call a break turn for this if it looks like the bandit is inside a wes. If the bandit counters the sandwich by switching targets, then you'll call a bandit switch. That would sound like this, bandit switched, eagle 2 engaged. To set up a practice session for defensive ACM, you can use the free ACM mission from the previous video. Just like before, you'll use the radio menu to call up a red fighter. These fighters always spawn directly over the X-shaped airfield flying west. So you'll want to have your flight fly west over the X and spawn the bogey after you pass. This way it'll end up in your rear hemisphere for a defensive setup. Defensive ACM is the last part of the ACM series. Effective ACM is the culmination of the skills we learned from formation flying, BFM, and of course this series on ACM. It's all about using teamwork to win. But our journey into the workings of modern air combat won't end here. In a future series that'll be called Air Supremacy, we'll go over how to take all these team-based skills we've learned so far and employ them as part of an even larger team. Air supremacy is the U.S. Air Force's term for the highest degree of control over a contested piece of airspace. If you want to have this level of control, you need a large team that works together better than the adversary's team. Getting there takes a lot of work, but it all starts with the fundamentals we covered here. Keep practicing them. Remember that these skills are perishable. And as always, I hope this was informative and thank you for taking the time to go through this series with me.